Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Tavis Smiley. Tonight, a conversation with Princeton University professor Cornell West. The best-selling author and noted intellectual is out with a unique project that combines music and inspirational spoken word. The disc is called Never Forget and features a number of high-profile collaborations with artists like Prince, Jill Scott, Andre 3000, and the late Gerald Levert. We're glad you've joined us. Dr. Cornell West is coming up right now. Tab Smiley is made possible in part by Toyota, makers of the 2007 Toyota Camry. Toyota, moving forward. Tavis Smiley is sponsored in part by Walmart. Walmart strives to be a valued member of the communities we serve by providing a range of employment opportunities, from hourly jobs to salaried careers, and by donating to charities that address community concerns. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Always pleased to welcome Dr. Cornell West to this program. The Princeton University professor is out this fall with an acclaimed new CD, fusing hip hop and empowering spoken word. The disc features some terrific collaborations with artists like Prince, KRS-One, Andre 3000, Jill Scott, the late Gerald Levert. The list goes on and on and on. The new CD is called Never Forget, A Journey of Revelations. The first track features Talib Kweli and is called Bushonomics. Take a look. Revolution required participation. But sometimes people be hesitating. Respect the will of the people. The government serve the people. The people don't serve the government. And Bushonomics is essentially about the ice age that we've lived in for the last 40 years. An ice age is a historical period where it's fashionable to be indifferent to other people's suffering, especially the most vulnerable people's suffering. Dr. West, good to see you as always, sir. Always a dear blessing, my brother. Man, good to see you. I'm going to start, indeed, first indeed. of all, by going right to the cover of this CD. Um, because everybody who I know who has seen it, who has a copy of it, gets stuck for just a few moments at, with that cover. Tell me about this, this, this cover shot. Yeah, you know, his brother Steve McKeever, who is the visionary founder of Hidden Beach, he came up with this portrait, though, brother. You have precious young African brothers and sisters who are on a slave ship and there's hundreds of them they're, st they're sitting and standing with dignity but on their way into the nightmare of white supremacy and enslavement called america or the new world and so much of our music really ushers from this context of on the one hand the wounds bars, bruises and scars but on the other hand this unbelievable creativity, imagination, intelligence, and genius, though, brother. It's a, speaking of Steve McKeever, who is a genius, it's a genius cover here on the one hand. On the other hand, you've got to be prepared to wrestle with this before you open this thing up. Yeah, that's true. I wonder whether or not there's some folk who you think might be turned off by a cover like this because of the honesty it takes to even deal with the cover, much less what you're about to get on the inside. No, but I think it's very important, though, brother, in the uh, musical tradition in general, black musical tradition in particular, mm -hmm. You have to be committed to truth. You're not committed to just being well adjusted to the narrow sensibilities or sentiments of your audience. Mm -hmm. You want to uplift your audience. You want to be able to challenge your audience as well as entertain. You want to delight and instruct at the same time. The very thing you've been doing for nearly five years in your love and service to the public, though, brother. You want to unsettle your audience, and at the same time, you want to delight you know you want to keep a little smile on their face as they wrestling with some deep issues i read one a review of the piece uh of the of the cd where you refer to the record as danceable education i like yeah, that yeah. danceable education yeah that comes out of uh nietzsche's text where he talks about uh the, the attempt to engage in a kind of singing paideia p-a-i-d-e-i-a -E -E, which mm -hmm. means this attentiveness to serious issues not the frivolous but the serious not the superficial but the substantial but also 
the cultivation of a self that wrestles with history, that wrestles with mortality, that wrestles, in fact, with one's own memories, so that the very way one sings becomes a form of memory, the very way one talks and stylizes space and time and how one talks is a certain kind of historical memory in a way. But most importantly, it's about a maturity, though, brother. And I think the younger generation, you see, they look at me and they say, what is this old brother doing in hip hop? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, I am the Curtis Mayfield, Stax, Motown, Philly sound version of hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> so I consider myself in the hip hop community. So uh -huh. when my dear brother, Karis One, who's been lecturing in my courses at Princeton for years, says, brother, you are part of hip hop. I say, yes, but I know I'm not at the center. I'm not a great rapper like Karis One or Talib, a rhyme fest. I'm certainly not a singer like Jill Scott. You know, she got a new album out. Indeed. God bless her. And it's serious, too. Yeah. In fact, we both in the, in the <laughs> we, can we carry your version? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was nice. Right. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. I got, I got to explain that before he goes further. That's a little inside joke. Doc, Doc is just still giddy about this. Oh, it's so, so nice. So, man. Jill Scott, one of the towering artists of our time, no question about it. Jill Scott was shooting a video for her, her new record down the street from my office one day. Dr. West happened to be in town, and I got a phone call that Jill Scott was down the street shooting this video. So, I said, Doc, let's go down the street and holler at Jill Scott, who I know and love. We went down the street to holler at Jill Scott. And while we're on the set watching her record this uh, video, she insisted Dr. West and I come be a part of the video on the spot. I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. And you didn't want to do it at I'm all. Like, nah. I said, no, nah, we didn't I'm come. I'm trying to drag you into it. You, you this is Jill Scott. I said, hey, you, we you get it. You literally did. You oh, pulled yes. me into the I scene. I dragged you right on I'm in. I'm like, I didn't come dressed to be in no Jill Scott video. But anyway, if you see Jill Scott's video for her, one of the, that's the, probably the single, the first release, it's called Hate On Me. Hate On Great Me. Great song. You'll see Dr. Hate On Me because my mind is free. That's right. It's a beautiful thing to be a free person and a free black man, a free black woman. It's a beautiful thing. But it means that your commitment to truth, where the very condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak, and your commitment to justice, with the very condition of justice, to allow the voices of those slight stone called ordinary people to make sure those voices are heard to shape their destiny. And that's what the best of the black musical tradition. That's why I invoked the Curtis Mayfields, the John Coltrane's, mm -hmm. the Sarah Vaughn's, and others. I want to go back to something you said before we got into this wonderful Jill Scott story. <laughs> um, we were talking about KRS-One, who's on the project, who's lectured in your classes for years. Yeah, my dear at brother. At the university. Mm -hmm. um, that word lecture struck me because the one thing that the hip-hop generation does not like is to be lectured. Yes, So that's true. how do you navigate this line of putting forth the project that honors the tradition that involves many of the towering artists, KRS-One, Talib, Ron Fest, and others, involves these, these wonderful artists in the project, yes. reminds them of our past, but doesn't lecture them. Yeah. How, how do you, that's a fine no, line but That's walk. a very crucial question. That's the last thing they want to be lectured. You don't want to be didactic, and you certainly in no way want to be arrogant, condescending, or haughty. Mm -hmm. But they do want to be taught. That's why that danceable education, that singing paideia, you got to give them the groove, you got to give them the funk, and you got to give them your love of the music in which there is a message. Going back to the OJs and, you know, the late, great Joe Levert is on here, too, though, you know. Yeah. And uh, w when we got together, brother Mike Daly, my dear brother in Sacramento, came up with the idea. And, of course, my blood brother, Clifton West, birthday just yesterday, got blessing. We and I grew up together, grew up, slept in the same room for many, many, many years. <laughs> when we got together, and Derek Allen as well is no longer with us, but he's a good brother and has, 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 has done some wonderful work with us that we said we got to do something that has a message in the music, but people got to be able to feel the groove. Mm -hmm. They had to be able to, to dance to the beat. And so you're absolutely right. You don't want teaching in the didactic sense.